So in the previous video, we looked at spacing scale, which does a really good job of calculating a set of steps to use in the padding and margin dimensions in the WordPress block editor. And this time we're going to look at another property for spacing sizes, which allows you to get more granular with the spacing, particularly with padding, margins and block gaps. So in this example, what I'm going to do is to add a property for spacing sizes. And this is an array of objects and each object requires a name, size and slug. So I'm going to add a name of 50 and set the size to 50 pixels and a slug to 50. Now, if you remember, the medium step was six and the units were in rems. This time I'm going to set the medium step to 50 pixels. So save the theme.json file then go back to the editor and refresh the page and ensuring you've got a group selected go to the style settings and under the padding section, you'll see that we've now got three steps, small, 50 and large. Now this is because the label, or the tooltip, comes from the new spacing size name that's been set under the spacing sizes property. So if you want to add more custom spacing sizes in here, you can do so. So go back to the theme.json file, go ahead and add a new object with the name of 40, set that to 40 pixels and a slug to 40. Now the interesting thing here, is if we increase the steps in the spacing scale to say seven, save the theme.json file, then go back to the editor and refresh the page. And with the group selected, go to the style settings, scroll to padding. You'll notice that obviously we've got more steps, but if we adjust this going up and down one step, we'll see 40 and 50 as the new label that's coming from our new spacing sizes that we've just set. Now, although spacing scale is being populated, the values set for 40 and 50 are no longer coming from the spacing scale, it's now coming from the custom spacing sizes. So what is happening is that although we've set the spacing scale, our new spacing sizes are being merged into the spacing scale. Now this could get very confusing very quickly. So my recommendation would be to use one or the other. Don't complicate things by trying to mix spacing scale with your custom spacing sizes. Now there are a couple of things also to be aware of here. If you're using spacing scale or spacing sizes, Anything over seven steps or seven objects is going to change from sliders in the UI to a drop down menu, as you can see here. Another thing to be aware of is that you can have no more than 10 steps. And this is because of the way that the default CSS variables and presets are set in core. So just be aware of that. So go to the theme.json file. I'm going to get rid of the spacing scale and I'm going to replicate what I previously had, but this time I'm only going to use spacing sizes. I'm using numbers for Naming labels is probably not that useful. So I'm going to give them names that will be more useful in the UI. So we previously had small and this size is going to be 40 pixels with a slug of 40, then medium with 50 pixels. And that's going to have a slug of 50 and finally large with a size of 60 pixels and a slug of 60. So save the theme.json file and then go back to the editor and refresh the page, select one of the group blocks and under the style settings in the padding section, you'll notice we now have reclaimed our spacing sizes with labels, small, medium, and large. And that's how you set up spacing sizes. However, we can take this one step further. So first of all, I'll set the top and bottom padding on this group to medium, and I'll do the same for the left and right padding. I'll save the page and return to the front end of my website. And in the browser, I'm gonna use the responsive mode so that I can increase and decrease the browser window. Now you'll notice that the padding around this group remains consistent regardless of the width of the browser window. It's set with a medium padding spacing, which is 50 pixels, and the font is also set to medium. However, the font size actually is fluid, meaning that it will grow and shrink as we increase or decrease the browser window. Now, this is something I covered in a previous video, and you'll find a link to that in the top right of this video. So when we resize the page or the viewport, the spacing remains unchanged. Whether we go smaller or larger, the space remains consistent which makes complete sense because we've set the spacing specifically to a pixel size. So wouldn't it be nice if the space were to shrink or increase as the browser was resized much like the font does? Well, this is the logic behind intrinsic design over responsive design breakpoints, because technically we have no idea what size the user is viewing our website app. Yes, we can gather stats on screen resolutions, but desktop users can still resize their browser window. There's no standard sizes for mobile device screens, and if your website is cast to a TV screen, well, they come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. So here are a few things that you can do in the theme.json file to address spacing in a fluid way, much the same as we've done with the fonts. And let me show you how. So let's return to the theme.json file. 
Now here we can use a CSS function in the size property to make the design more responsive. This time we're going to use the CSS min function, which takes two or more values and tells the browser to apply the smallest one. For example, we can set one value to 50 pixels and we can also add a viewport width value, which acts as a percentage of the viewport width. So if I set this value to five VW, the size will be 5% of the viewport's width. So here's what's gonna happen. When we expand the browser width, 50 pixels becomes the smallest value. Therefore, the spacing is locked at 50 pixels. However, when we shrink the browser, 5% then becomes the smaller value. And because it's a percentage, the space becomes fluid regardless of the width. And you can also do this in reverse by using the max function. Now with max, the size will always take the larger value between the fixed 50 pixels or the 5% of the viewport width. When we shrink the browser width, the spacing is locked at 50 pixels because that becomes the larger value. However, when we expand the browser, the 5% spacing becomes the larger value and continues to grow as the viewport width increases. Now this approach is particularly useful for intrinsic design techniques. It ensures that the spacing adapts to the screen size while maintaining a consistent minimum or maximum size. So with the min function used as my medium size, save the theme.json file and then go back to the front end and refresh the page. You'll see that as the viewport grows, the spacing is locked into 50 pixels. Or as we shrink the viewport, the spacing then becomes fluid as the browser recalculates 5% of the viewport width. And the same in reverse. If we change the size property to max 50 pixels and 5 viewport width, as we contract the viewport, the spacing is locked in at 50 pixels. But if we expand the viewport, the spacing is recalculated to 5% of the viewport width. So we can take this another step further by using another CSS function called clamp. Now, clamp takes three values. It takes a minimum value, a preferred value, and a maximum value. The browser will then choose the value within this range, making sure it stays between the minimum and the maximum limits, but ideally sticking to the preferred value if possible. And this is a really flexible way of utilizing intrinsic design techniques and eliminating the need for adding responsive breakpoints, particularly when setting up a robust spacing system that will adapt to virtually any changing conditions. And that's how you set up spacing sizes in the theme.json file. So thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. You can show your appreciation by hitting the like button and that'll help this video get out to more people that are interested in learning more about the theme.json file. And feel free to subscribe for more tips like this.